This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for UCLA Bruin Talk. Alongside Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus. Pleased to have you with us. We think you're really going to enjoy this week's show. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. UCLA's motto is champions made here and we've got a bunch of champions on our show for you this time. We're going to start off with women's golf who won the championship in 2011. We're very pleased to be joined by some repeat guests to Bruin Talk, Ani Galugian and Lee Lopez. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> well, you for having us. <laughs> uh, you are right now in your kind of only break of the year. You just finished your fall schedule and you pick them up and start playing tournaments again in February. Ani, you going to get any time away from the clubs? Um, I had a little bit of time, a couple days, just to catch up on schoolwork and stuff. But um, you got to keep working, got to keep grinding it out for spring. So, Lee, what kind of things do you work on now when you're not actually playing tournament competition? I think for, for us golfers, a little more mechanical now that we won't be competing for the next two months. So a lot of time on the driving range, a lot of time just working on your different set of skills that you have and just keep trying to improve them for spring. Golf is a sport that you have to practice, like you're saying, on a nonstop, basically. It's a year-round sport. And before the show, we had a discussion about yoga <laughs> and how much we liked it. Um, but most people don't think about the cross-training that golfers might have to put in, the flexibility and the strength. Tell us a little bit about what you do off the course to make sure that you're playing your best. I think, I mean, we're having workouts three times a week, and we do extra on our own. And Ani and I really like doing yoga in Santa Monica. so. I think it's just as much discipline doing that as on the golf course, definitely. What's the goal when you're doing these kind of cross training? I know for years, tour players would never be seen anywhere near a gym, and now they work like fanatics. I mean, mm -hmm. what, do you worry about building up muscles in areas that are going to decrease your flexibility? I mean, I think it's an all-around um, body workout. I know for golfers it's really important for our flexibility to do that. So like we were talking about yoga. Um, definitely getting stronger. As women you want to hit the ball further so you need to do anything you can to do that. Um, cardio definitely. I mean I know it doesn't seem very rigorous to be out playing 18 holes but five days straight for five hours a day. It's, it's a lot. So. 
Both of you have been playing golf for quite some time now. You've both played four years in high school. What initially attracted you to the sport? How did you pick up your first set of clubs? Uh, for me, it was my dad. Um, he played golf all the time when I was younger, and I think from the time I was three, I had a golf club in my hand, and um, he started giving me lessons around seven, and at eight, I started competition, so it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> You've both had a chance to play in competitions outside of school. I know, Anna, you were in the 2009 U.S. Open. Lee, you played in the LPGA ShopRite Classic in 2012. What is it like when you're out there really competing just on your own in a tournament with some of the best players in the world? It's so much fun. I mean, I think it's what we both work for the entire season, not only to be on a team, but to improve individually. So to be able to play against the best in the world at one of the top tournaments in the world, I mean, it's so much fun. It's like living the dream, what you work for your whole life. Is there any kind of an awe factor when you get out and say, wait a second, I'm playing in a tournament with all those LPGA players that I see every week. To take you a while to realize, hey, I've just got to get here and play my game? <laughs> I think so, definitely, especially when it's your first tournament. Like for me, it was my first LPGA event. Um, so it took a while to feel comfortable, but once I did, I mean, it's just another golf course. You're competing against other people. So it's the same thing, just different venues. Ani, is it tough to remind yourself to play the course, not the, not the competitor uh, lined up with you? I think most definitely it is. It's one of the key things in golf is you have to focus on being mentally strong and focusing on just your game and one shot at a time. So, yes. <laughs> We are talking about you guys playing kind of in individual tournaments, and most people think of golf as an individual sport, but here at UCLA, you're on a team. Um, you're, every hole that you play contributes to the team. So explain to us and our viewers how golf can be a team sport rather than just an individual sport. It's, I mean, it's a lot of pressure, I feel like, because when you have a team, you know how hard everybody else's work, not only yourself. So I think when you get out there, I mean, you're always thinking about your teammates. I, I know I am. I mean, it's hard not to. So it's, it's tough, but I think you need to remind yourself all you can do is, is your best, and that's all your teammates ask of you. So, But it's, it's really nerve-wracking, I think. We talked about the 2011 NCAA championship. Part of the great legacy of UCLA is the team championships. Uh, as you look back on that, Ani, describe your feelings when the Bruins won the title and you were a big part of it. <laughs> Um, I think about it a lot, actually, and um, I want to have that feeling again. So um, it's the most incredible feeling you could possibly have to work so hard for so long and then have that ultimate goal achieved and be with your teammates. Normally golf, you know, it's an individual sport, so you kind of are your own hero in a sense. And then when you have your team, you're able to celebrate with everybody and everybody is happy for you and the school representing the school as well. So. Lee, you transferred to UCLA. You got mm -hmm. to take part in that wonderful championship run. Golf is a series of near misses. I mean, every round there's a couple shots that get away. And a lot of times in tournaments, there's a couple shots that make the difference. But to actually get to the end mm -hmm. and be the champion, describe the feeling. It was unreal. I mean, I like Ani, I think about it a lot. Sometimes I just. It seems unreal sometimes, and I just have to go back and say, wow, we, we really did do that. Because I think you come to a place like UCLA, and you know it's a possibility. And to actually make that possibility happen, it's, it's I mean, I think it's, it was one of the best moments of my life so far, definitely. Lee, Dave alluded to the fact that you transferred into UCLA after playing your first year of college golf at Long Beach State, if I'm not mistaken. What helped you make the decision to come to UCLA? You're from kind of the Cal Southern California area. What attracted you to UCLA? Honestly, I just wanted to be a part of, of the UCLA community and the Bruin family. Um, I think we build a really strong legacy of, of being very devoted to not only athletics but academics and I wanted to come to a school that would give me that opportunity to challenge me to be a better athlete, better golfer, better student, better person and um, I also really wanted to be coached by Carrie and Alicia. It was I think to be here f with them for four years has been really special. So. We've talked a lot about golf being a sport that's a mental sport. There's no question about it. You have to be dialed in to compete at your best. Before a competition, Ani, I know you go out and practice five hours a day, but you're on the tee and you're just about to start a tournament. Are there jitters you really have to get a handle on? Uh, definitely. How do I you think manage that? Every time you tee it up, um, no matter how big or small the tournament is, um, you have those first tee jitters. But um, you just kind of take a deep breath and go into your routine and just 
say, you know, this is just like I practice, and you just kind of go with it and focus on your swing tips. So, Lee, the third shot in the first round is just as important as the, you know, <laughs> shot on the 18th hole coming down mm -hmm. the stretch. Are there times when you have to refocus, say, wait a second, I, I really got to pay attention here, even though it's the early rounds and early hole. Mm -hmm. How, are there times when your mind kind of wanders and you have to pull yourself back in? Definitely. I think, I think that happens for every athlete that plays golf. I mean, you're out there for five hours. It's bound to happen. Um, and sometimes I feel like you want it to happen. You don't just want to be on the grind for five straight hours. So you need time to relax and then come back and regroup. And I think it makes it easier if you take a little mental break and then come back and think, OK, here's my next shot. We were talking about your schedule, and your schedule, even over the holidays and after, before you start playing tournaments again in February, it's really demanding. I mean, you're out there practicing. You get great weather to practice in Southern California. That's good, because you get a lot of quality practice time, but do you think it makes it harder when you get into tournament time and you may be playing somewhere in the wind and the rain? I think so, definitely, and I think that's something that, as a team, we all need to work on, is that we're really lucky, we're spoiled here in Southern California, that we always get to practice in that kind of weather. Um, so I think it's something that maybe we just need to get out when there is bad weather and practice, since we will be playing in that. And Ani, we were talking before we started taping the show about having to play in all kinds of layers <laughs> of gear, and it's something that people who watch on TV really don't think about. Say, how come they couldn't hit that shot? You know, you're dressed up like a, like, you know, parka and gloves. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's really makes a difference in how you play the game depending on how cold it is, doesn't it? Definitely. I mean, even just trying to swing with all those layers on or you have to make sacrifices to be cold rather than put the layers on so you can make the shot. So. Lee, we've been talking about how much golf is a mental game and how you need to take mental breaks and then regroup. And we mentioned earlier that there's always going to be those shots in the round where it doesn't go exactly maybe how you wanted. How do you not let those little setbacks set you back for the entire tournament? How do you make sure to move on from those mistakes? I think, honestly, that's something that we all constantly work on, and I think even the most experienced players have to work on that. For me, personally, I, I mean, I just feel like why, why waste that one that one shot for something that I'll be doing for the next three hours, for the next month, for the next 10 years? So I just try to see it as in a big picture and not focus on, on that little moment and just don't let one thing take away from everything you've been doing well so far. As we project into the future, a lot of recent Bruins are doing very well out on the Pro Tour. Uh, Ryan O'Toole's had a wonderful career. There's Stephanie Kono. They're all getting out there playing. You guys are going to be in that position in the next couple of years. Tell us your thoughts as you look ahead to a professional future. I think for me, this being my senior year, um, the LPGA is definitely in, in my goal list, for sure. Um, I'll be graduating June with my degree, so that's, I'm really excited about that. But um, as soon as I finish the season and get my degree, um, I'm definitely planning on going to qualifying school in, in the fall. So I'm, I'm excited about that. It's, it's something that I've been working for for a really long time now, and it will be nice to see a lot of Bruins out there on the tour. It will uh, help a lot. Ani, you've got a little more time, but have you thought about uh, the future years? Oh, definitely. How can you not? Um, you think about that before you even start college. So um, just like Lee, I'm going to finish out and get my degree and then go out there and try and live out my dream. So. Well, they're off right now, but they come back in February as they start playing their spring tournament schedule. And you can follow all the exploits of UCLA women's golf on UCLABruins.com. Ani Lee, thanks for joining us so much. Great to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more UCLA Bruin Talk right after this message. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Brett Hundley as our Athlete of the Week. In UCLA football's dominating 66-10 win over Arizona, Brett passed for 288 yards and three touchdowns. At one point in the game, he made 16 straight passes, finishing with 23 completions on 28 attempts. Hundley's 21 touchdown passes this season are tied for the fifth most in a single year, and his 2,761 yards of total offense are seventh most in one campaign at UCLA. 
Congratulations, Brett, and good luck with the rest of the season. If, if you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. Continuing on our theme of champions made here, the 11th National Championship banner for men's basketball would not be hanging in Pauley Pavilion without the exploits of our next guest. We're very pleased to welcome Tyus Edney to Bruin Talk. And Tyus, back on campus, your third year now as the Director of Basketball Operations for the men's team. Great to have you on our show. Thanks for having me. I know people talk to you all the time about your dash against Missouri, 4.8 seconds end to end, that really got the Bruins to the point where they could win that 95 championship. You ever get tired of talking about it? Never. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's one of the most iconic plays in UCLA history, and it's got to be wonderful knowing that people are always going to associate you with that winning team. Yeah, it's a it's a great memory. I mean, that that year, uh, the way it finished out, really is what what's exciting to me. But the play and and just the people that remember where a lot of people remember where they were, what they were doing. Uh, I've heard a lot of interesting stories, and, and uh, I love hearing them all. So it's been great. Now that banner is hanging in a beautiful new home in the rafters of New Poly Pavilion. The men's team just moved back in there and mm -hmm. get your season going underway in the new building. Tell us what it's like going back to that wonderful home. Oh, we're, we're all excited. I mean, it's been a long, seems like forever, you know, we, we've been uh, practicing in, in different places and, and uh, you know, it's been tough, but now we're finally back to where we belong and, and uh, we're, we're really excited and it's, it's, it's a beautiful arena, you know, uh, UCLA did an unbelievable job and, and uh, you know, we're just happy to be, be back in there. We mentioned earlier that this is your third year back on campus being director of basketball operations for the team. What kind of experience do you take from being on the other side maybe? Mm -hmm. And that you were a player and now you're kind of within the administration. What kind of wisdom do you feel like you can impart on these young Bruins? Uh, I, th I think I just try to get them to uh, just focus, not not stress too much. You know, it's, it's hard being an athlete. You're so busy. I think they're even busier than we were. Um, but I remember, you know, just having always something to do, having to be somewhere practicing and things like that. And it can get stressful. And, and you know, just trying to just show that I understand and, and just help them you know, get through it as best as they can. Tell us about some of your duties as Director of Basketball Operations. Um, like, like she said, just kind of sometimes mentoring them, just keeping, giving words of wisdom, things like that. Um, basically, just day-to-day -day things that come up, meetings, uh, you know, departments meeting, things like that. I have to keep a coach and, and everyone, you know, abreast on it. And, and uh, just being, you know, basically there to do whatever needs to be done at any time, which like being with in different practice places and things like that all the time and, and having to organize things like that and and uh, but things come up all the time so it's 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 something that keeps keeps me on my toes. The composition of a college basketball team real different now than when you played. A lot of players are here one two years and then gone so you're always rebuilding you always have younger players. Mm -hmm. What kind of pressures does that put on a staff as you try to mold a team? Uh, well you're always recruiting I know <laughs> I mean it's you, you, you want the kids to do well and, and you want them to go on and, and maybe play professional basketball. I mean, that's, I think that's what we're here for is to make them better players. So, uh, you know, if they're able to do that, that's a compliment, I think, to the staff. But at the same time, as you said, it, it's, it's tough because you don't know every year what, what your team is going to be that next season. So um, those are the challenges, but, you know, we're, all the coaches and staff and everybody's just all out there trying to you know, keep the talent level level up and, and keep everyone wanting to be Bruins. Tyus, after UCLA, you had four years in the NBA and then a long career overseas. And I, we were talking before the show started about how I was flipping channels in Italy one night in 2006 <laughs> and I saw a familiar player out on the floor. It must have been wild playing in those European leagues. Yeah, it was. I had a great experience over there. You know, it was good and bad, really, but um, mostly good, which which was fortunate for me. And and uh, it was it was a ball playing over there. Fans are are you know they're fanatical, and I don't know if you've seen soccer and over there and how the the fans are in, in those games, but they take it inside to the basketball court too. So it's a lot it's a lot different than, than you know you might expect and but uh, it's a lot of fun well I just remember the fans were about one inch from the court and they were throwing <laughs> things up in the stands and you know the game was somehow going on is the play more physical over there um, I, I think it is a little bit more physical I think now with the NBA there's you know a lot of rules to kind of not have too much you know physicality so 
over there they don't have those rules so you can uh, you can get away with a, with a lot more over there but you know it, people may not know it is definitely a physical game and, and uh, you know it's a, a tough game. This year the Pac-12 tournament is moving from Los Angeles to Las Vegas which is more of a neutral site the Staples Center is neutral but we're here USC mm -hmm. is here and Las Vegas is completely neutral. Mm -hmm. How do you think this will affect the Bruins? Are you looking forward to that change, maybe shaking things up a little bit? I think we're all looking forward to it. I think Vegas is a, a great venue. Like you said, it's a neutral site, but it's still close for everyone. And uh, I think it's a, just a great, great place to have a tournament. Um, we're all looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a, a, a nice tournament. It's a good change, I think. Sometimes you have to shake things up, so uh, I think it'll turn out well. Tyus, after your playing days ended, how did you go about staying involved in the game, coming back to UCLA, coming back to, the, to your home? Um, as, well, when I stopped, I, I helped out a little bit at high school, and um, then kind of right away this, this opportunity came up to come back, back home, really, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what, how it worked out for me, and, and um, you know, so far it's been going well. The last year when the road show went to the sports arena and to mm -hmm. Ontario, it seemed like Poly Pavilion was just a distant thought in the future. <laughs> but now the viewing, tell us about the, the, the locker rooms and the lounges and the film room, a lot of stuff that didn't exist before. Yeah, yeah, the, the kids are fortunate now. They, <laughs> <laughs> they have it good, but um, you know, I'm lucky to be here to enjoy it with them and, and open the building with them. But uh, it's, it's definitely a lot different. I mean, it's modernized. It, it feels like poly still, you know, when I, when I walked down for the first time onto the floor, I still, still felt like it was still Poly Pavilion, but, you know, obviously with a facelift and an upgrade. And, and, uh, but it's, it feels like you're in, you know, a pro-style arena now. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. They did, did a great job. There's a lot of exposure for Pac-12 basketball this year with the new network, and a lot of games are going to be on TV, and I think mm -hmm. the entire conference is getting stronger. How do you see the Pac-12 shaking down this year? I think it'll be a lot tougher, tougher conference this year. I think the talent level has gone up overall over the league, and um, you know some teams have improved just with either guys being out or redshirting that are coming back now. So um, you know I, I expect it to be a, a tougher, tougher league this year. And, and uh, like you said, we're getting a lot more exposure with the Pac-12 network, and even on the East Coast, they'll be able to watch our games. So I know a lot of our guys are happy about that. That are from from back there. So. Um, you know, we're expecting it to be a tough, tough season. I know my parents are excited that they get to keep up with the Bruins now all the way in Texas. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Texas, you guys are set to play the Longhorns in December at Reliance Stadium, mm -hmm. which is basically there's going to be a basketball court plopped in the middle of a football field. <laughs> what are you looking forward to that experience? It's going to be a lot different, but it's got to be exciting. Yeah, it is. I mean, we have some, some good trips this year. In Brooklyn, we're getting ready for now. And, and uh, that'll be fun. I mean, I've never been there or, or seen the arena and you know I know it's huge and, and uh, it'll be interesting how that how that is I mean I guess it'll be a little bit like a final four type situation where you're in a big you know arena so um, you know it'd be interesting to see how our guys re you know react in that type of uh, environment. Well I'll see you there because I do the women's play-by-play -play and the women are also playing Texas mm -hmm. the first half yeah. of that double header. You won your national championship in Seattle in a dome. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between playing in a dome and playing in a regular arena? They always say it's tough to get that shooter's, uh, mm -hmm. that shooter's eye when you're playing with a deep backdrop. Yeah, it's. I, I think you feel it more when, when, you, like, when you first walk in and, and you're just looking around and it's just everything, the people are, you know, just way <laughs> you can't even see them really you just know that there are people up there um, but it was strange that once you got on the court and it seemed like you know it kind of it shrunk it shrunk like you were just on the court so um, I think we got used to it pretty fast I mean once it's almost like you're overwhelmed but then once you get on the court and you're familiar with you know the basket everything's the same distance and, and the courts the same size and you realize that it's you know it's normal just like any other place and, and you adjust I think I always wondered you know they always say it's tough for shooters to adjust and you know guys play in the park all the time there's mm -hmm. no stands in the park <laughs> yeah, you know, you've got yeah. trees way off in the distance <laughs> but is it kind of like playing outside in the park it, it is a little bit a little bit I think so uh, just because nothing is right next to you you know and you don't have the wind factor like you do at the park <laughs> <but> <laughs> Well, that's going to be a real high-profile game against Texas December 8th. Um, how important are those national profile games for a team to get prepared for the pressures of tournament play? Uh, I think extremely important. I mean, we have a lot of, we play a lot of good teams this year. Um, 
like I was saying, Missouri, San Diego State. I mean, those Brooklyn. We have those, the two teams that we can play there, and uh, those are the games that that you expect to see if you if you know if you're fortunate to make it to the tournament. So. Um, playing in those games, playing in big games and big arenas and, and different venues like that prepares you for, for the tournament. And I think that's one of the most important things, even in our season that, that we did, was, was play those big games and, you know, had success so you have confidence going into the tournament. Yeah, I want to go back to Poly Pavilion for just a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, season's upcoming. There's a great recruiting class. There are high expectations for the UCLA Bruins this year. How do you prepare to help lead this team into battle and get to these tournaments that we're talking about? Uh, I think everyone's just so excited to be back. I mean, really, it's uh, hard to not be motivated to, to do well. And I think we we're fortunate to have freshmen that are all winners and come, came from winning programs. So they're used to doing that. And uh, I think that they've brought that kind of atmosphere here. And, and uh, you know, it makes it kind of easy just to, to, to prepare them and get them ready. You know, it's, it's, uh, they're excited to play. So uh, that kind of, you know, makes it a little easier for us. But, uh, but, but we know that we'll, you know, get them focused and, and, and get them ready to, to go to battle and defend our home. Allison and I were wondering before the show how long we're going to be calling it New Poly Pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is a few years. What do you think? A few years? Uh, more than that. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a wonderful home. It's great to have Tyus Edney on the court with the Bruins. Thanks so much for stopping in on Bruin Talk and best of luck for the upcoming season. All right. Thanks for having me. And thank you for having us. We're glad you joined us for UCLA Bruin Talk. Allison and I will be back next week with another great show. Until then, I'm Dave Marcus saying so long from Westwood.